Hello everybody, welcome to Savage Ink Studios. I'm your host, Ink, and today's sketchbook story time is about the first time that I fell in love. Okay, so I feel really awkward using that word in the context now looking back and knowing that I was an 11 year old nut job, but during that point in time, that is what I called it. A, a more accurate word probably would be obsession. But um, anyway, the first time that I fell in obsession, we'll call it. So a little bit of backstory here. Uh, for those of you who are super familiar with my channel, you know that I, I had some mental health issues and a lot of stuff going on in my life when I was like 11-ish. So this was my very first visit to a mental hospital. And, uh, and at this said mental hospital, I, here, I'll set it up for you even. I was in group. It was like my first day there. I was super scared. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know how long I was going to be stuck there. I was obviously going through a really tough time. I'd just been sent in because my dad had just found out that I had been self-harming and didn't know what else to do, so they shipped me away to a loony bin. And my first day in group, I'm looking through the crowd of other kids all around my age, some of them looking scared like me, and other kids looking like this is old news. And in that group, I see this girl, and it's like, light comes down from the heavens, and, you know... The wind in her hair, not really, but like, I see this girl, and I did not know her name, I did not know anything about her, I did not know why she was in the loony bin, none of it mattered, I was convinced this was the girl that I was, I was gonna, I was gonna get this girl, and I was gonna be with her for the rest of my life, and I did not, I did not even know this girl's name, so, after group, I approached her, and you know, I was, I was playing it cool, you know, just chatting like a normal person or whatever, but it, it, she made it obvious pretty quickly on that, uh, that she liked girls too. So I'm like, ah, oh, score. And by day three, we were like completely inseparable. I mean, we ate together, we hung out together during all of our free time, we sat next to each other in group, we sat next to each other during projects, we told each other everything, and the more I talked to this girl, we'll call her Anna, the more I talked to Anna, the more convinced I was that I was just going to love this girl forever. I, I had never felt like this about another human being in my entire life, and I was just like blown away. And I'm sitting here telling myself that the reason that all of this happened and that I ended up in this scary place was because I, the, the universe wanted me to meet this girl, right? And I mean, she wasn't even conventionally attractive. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't a, wow, this girl's gorgeous, she's hot, I want to tap that. It wasn't, it wasn't even that. And I wasn't even really at that place in puberty yet, where I was, like, going there just yet, you know? So, it it wasn't even like that. She was pretty average looking in the face, you know, cute round face, big round eyes, long brown hair, long brown hair. And she actually had like a really, really obvious big physical deformity in her legs. So like, like I said, this, this wasn't just like a, oh, she's pretty and I like her. Like for some reason I was just like, I know nothing about this girl, but I I want this girl. And we got to know each other, and I just got deeper and deeper in this, like, crazy obsession. We got out, and, like, I was so scared that she was going to stop talking to me. But, you know, we added each other on our little 11-year-old social medias, and, like, we didn't stop talking. Now, I'm not sure if I've covered this in any of my previous videos or not, so I will give you a little more information. The catalyst to me having such terrible issues that I needed to go 
to the mental hospital that specific moment in time was because my mom had my mom's psycho boyfriend had told my mom that I wasn't allowed to be a part of their life and she had booted me out and I thought that I was never going to see my mom and that I was never going to see the kids again. So I was in a really, really fucked up place. But I was a really hard worker even from the time that I was a, like a young child. So up to that point, I would mow lawns and rake and shovel snow for my neighbors to make money, which previously I had been, you know, getting food and bringing it to my mom's house when I went to visit. But since I wasn't allowed to see my mom or the kids or be over there, I was still working my butt off because that's just what I did, but I didn't actually have anything to spend my money on. So, you know, well, there's this girl that I'm like wild for, right? So obviously I'm going to spend all my money on her. And I, as much as an 11 year old kid can take another kid on a date, like I had my parents drop me off at the mall to hang out with her and I would buy her lunch, and I would, like, buy her cute little trinkets and cheap jewelry and whatever I could afford. And, I mean, this girl totally led me on. From the very beginning, she was like, you know, I'm not ready for a relationship right now, but I really, really like you. She, like, dropped the big L word on me, too, and I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm so in love with you. I'm so in love with you. You know, little 11-year-old emo kid me. And we, like, I took her to the movies and stuff. I mean, like, I thought that this was totally serious and that this was, like, the beginning of the rest of my life, right? And, uh, but she, she had said, you know, I'm going through some stuff. I'm not ready for a relationship right now, but I really like spending time with you. And I'm just like, yeah, 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 of course. Okay, okay. So I'm blowing all of my little kid money on this chick, taking her to movies, buying her lunch, getting her nice, cute gifts and whatever. And, um... And after a while, I'm just like, so, like, this thing, we going to, like, do this thing? She's like, oh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. And it's been a while, you know? And the next thing I know, she's dating some guy, and I'm just like, what the heck? And she's like, it just happened, but, like, I'm, I haven't forgotten about you, and, you know, I don't know where this is going, and just, like, you know, wait for me. And I'm just like, okay, because I was dumb, and a kid, and dumb, really dumb, and, you know, I, I ended up, like, on and off, like, half dating other people, too, but every relationship, quote-unquote, that I got into, all the way up until I was 17, the relationship that I got into when I was 17, I told that person, you know, I will give this thing a shot, but I need to let you know, if Anna shows up on my doorstep and tells me, that she's ready for a relationship, I will drop your ass like a hot potato because I've been in love with this girl since I was 11 years old, you know? And, uh, yeah, so, like, that was a long time to be, like, super, super into this girl who, by the time that I was 17, didn't even talk to me anymore at all. Like, every time that she'd break up with her boyfriend, I'd, like, hop back into her messages and be like, hi, I've missed you. But it, it never, it was never to be. She just like led me around by the nose for like as long, as long as she possibly humanly could. And eventually, like, I must have been 16 at this point, but wasn't ready to give up for some reason because I was dumb still. When, we, when I was like 16, we went out to a movie or whatever and I had... <sighs> She had told me, she's like, you know, I don't think that this is fair to you because I don't think that I can be with somebody who can't, like, give me a kid. And I'm like, there are ways around that, you know, like, in vitro and adoption or, like, sperm donors, like, whatever. There are a million ways to make it work. Like, we've been waiting for this for, like, five years. Give me a chance, you know, just, like, try. And she's like, no, I can't. So... That was, like, after five years of being, like, let on, on and off, like, that was, like, super crushing. And I was, like, miserable about it for a really, really long time. And, and looking back now, like, I literally have no idea what it was about this girl that drove me so nuts. But, um, I thought to do this video because, like, last month, 
I get a random message and uh and guess who it's from? It's from Anna saying, you know, hey, I just wanted to, you know, check in, see how you're doing, say hello. And I just like froze up. You know, I've been with Jude for like three years and we are happy and I don't I've never like given him the Anna speech, you know, because it hasn't been relevant. We haven't spoken in years and frankly, like, I don't appreciate being let on for all that time, you know, and am no longer interested, thank God, because, like, I grew up. But, um, yeah, I actually went to Jude, and I'm just like, dude, I got this message from this girl that I, like, dated when I was, like, 10, you know? And, like, I don't know what to do. And he got, like, all jealous and pissy about it, and I'm just like, my dude. It was, like, 15 years ago, you know? But... Okay, so I never even responded to it, but, like, oh, uh, man, blast from the past. How weird. And it was weird. It was super weird. So, yeah. Um, and and you guys will come to know as I get into, like, the rest of my relationship stories that she is not the only girl from a mental hospital that I went after for some reason because I just don't f fucking learn, you know? Apparently, I'm just, like, out to get myself you know, repeatedly torn open and, and all that crap. So yeah, that's the story of the first time that I ever fell in, in obsession. I'm going to call it obsession because I was 11 and like I was obsessed, but I thought I was in love. So you guys know the drill. Check out this awesome fan art by these awesome artists because they're awesome. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, you know where to put them. And I will see you guys in the next one.